This is the Jason Walker Show. Two-time National Sports Media Association Montana Sportscaster of the Year and three-time loser, the Jason Walker Show. The best local and statewide sports coverage featuring the biggest guests from Montana. Flint Rasmussen uh, joining us here on the Jason Walker Show. He's freaking exhausting, too. You used to dance a lot more. Yeah, I know, lady. I'm 51 years old now. The NAI Hall of Famer Mike Van Deese joining us here Jason Walker Show. And is it just a deal where quarterbacks have to be be good golfers? Well, that's all they have time for. They don't work out. They don't lift weights. They don't do anything else. They might as well go get on the golf course and at least have some fun. And from across the country. Doug Gottlieb, our guest here on the Jason Walker Show. End of the day, remember, it, it's your show. It's got your name on it. Howie Mandel, our guest here. Jason Walker, deal or no deal? The Jason Walker Show. Broadcasting from the Major Mortgage Man Cave. Here's Jason Walker. Hey, happy Tuesday, the Jason Walker Show. Inside the Major Mortgage Man Cave on a beautiful Tuesday. We are presented by Capital Collision Center. Montana State Law says it's your vehicle. It's your choice where you have it repaired. Choose Capital Collision Center. Uh, We're going to talk to Jordy Hansen coming up today. And uh, get his recap on high school football. And also some basketball news with the Big Sky Conference. So we will uh, talk to him about that. And uh, let's see, what else we got? Uh, oh, we're going to talk to Rob Paulson. Rob Paulson is um, pretty good. Pretty good at what he does. He is a voice actor. He is the, uh, the man behind the voice of Pinky on Pinky and the Brain. He is also uh, Raphael and Donatello on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And uh, much more. So we'll talk to uh, him coming up. Rob Paulson, also on this day in history. And much, much more still to come here on the Jason Walker Show. Uh, Let's start with uh, COVID. That's what we do. Just our numbers. No judging. Just the numbers. 974 new cases reported today. 57,504 since March. 630 total deaths. 467 currently in the hospital, 16,188 active cases, and 40,686 recovered. 3730 in Yellowstone County, 2104 Cascade, 2344 Flathead, 1,035 in uh, Lewis and Clark, 1,593 in Missoula County. Got uh, 721 Silver Bow, 598. Is that Ravalli? Um, 724 in uh, Gallatin. And one of those cases in Lewis and Clark County is yours truly. I tested positive Friday. Uh, got the results back yesterday. So, um, been feeling, had some symptoms, very symptomatic. Uh, Symptoms since uh, last Tuesday. Obviously haven't been going anywhere, but um, sore throat, itchy eyes, uh, the body aches, the body pains, the muscle aches, the fever, um, fatigue, super, super fatigued. Um, This is no laughing matter. It's not a joke. It's not the flu, okay? Um. It is, uh, it's legit. The wife has been tested. The little one has been tested. And that's painful enough to have the little one tested because it goes, uh, well, you know how it works. They stick the Q-tip right up your nose. So, um, not fun, not fun at all. But we are, uh, we're going to make a recovery, hopefully. (laughs) Um, oh, the cough is, is starting to, to happen. So it's, it's weird and a constant headache, headache since Tuesday last week, man. Unbelievable. But we'll make it, we'll make it through. We'll have, uh, we'll be, we'll come out on the other side. Thankfully it's a short week this week because of the holiday and, uh, we weren't going to spend it with family anyway. So it worked out to where we can just be alone and, bundle up in the house and and not have to worry about anything. But uh, 
it's it's legit, man. And I've I've been saying since March, it's okay to overreact and at the same time be concerned when it comes to our sports. But uh, I'm telling you, this is not fun to deal with, and it hasn't been fun. Um, the last week, no sleep, and you know it's just it's the constant constant headache is is absolutely and everything everything that you think can go with it and it is it's it's works in the flu and again we don't know the long term effects after this you know so just something to think about and i'm not telling you just so that i could get some sympathy i'm telling you because it's real okay um not something to mess with but uh, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. As long as the little one doesn't get it, we'll be fine. Um, all right. So there. that's what we were going to chat about to begin with. I uh, saw this today, too. Chase Hawks, Rough Stock Rodeo has been postponed this year, canceled basically this year. Uh, announced yesterday uh, the cancellation because of the pandemic. Of course, uh, for 25 years, it's been bucking at the Metra and uh, some of the best bull riders, bareback, saddle bronc riders in the nation come to Billings every December for uh, Chase Hawks. Uh, Teddy Vogel, executive director of the Memorial Association, uh, told 406mtsports.com that uh, basically it just they couldn't, they felt they couldn't hold the event with the current health condition or regulations and didn't want to be a problem moving forward this year for, uh, for others. So, um, no Chase Hawks. And it's one of the better rodeos the rough stock rodeos that you'll see across the country year in and year out. And this year was going to be PRCA sanctioned, which means money won goes to the world standings. But uh, they'll have to start that next year. And if you uh, would like to help out, because there's not going to be that rodeo and the big drive behind it to fund the memorial... Uh, you can go to chasehawks.com and purchase jackets, vests, the shirts that were already ordered. Uh, you can purchase them on the website, and that's probably a really good, great, great Christmas idea too, now that I think about it. Um, so next year, it'll be December 18th, 2021. And they get the 20 best bull riders, saddle bronc riders, and bareback riders. And a lot of these competitors and stock come straight from national finals. So uh, missing out on the Chase Hawks this year, which is uh, terrible. I've never been, but I love I love it. Love what it does. Um, love what it supports. And uh, that's that's a bummer that they're not going to be able to have it this year. So, all right, there's that. Um, what else did I see we were going we to talk about that later in the show? Um, we got basketball starting in the NCAA ranks tomorrow. Lady Grizz at Utah State, hopefully. Hopefully. Um, we're going to talk to Jordy Hansen about cancellations in the Big Sky already. Because some games are already being canceled, non-conference, but are there? Are we going to see cancellations on the uh, conference format as well? And and we'll talk to Jordy about that um, coming up. Also, uh, cannot wait for you uh, to hear from Rob Paulson. Rob is a uh, he's the voice actor and. It's always intrigued me how people can change their voices and do all sorts of different things. 
And even more so now because I've got the little one and she's into cartoons. Now, it's not the cartoons that we grew up with, but still pretty good. Um, told you last week she's into superhero girls. Or is it yesterday? I don't even know what day of the week it is right now. Uh, superhero girls, which is pretty good. Um, My Little Pony seems to be through that phase, although we have one more full season. The new season is out now on Hulu, so we have to watch that. Um, And I think it's the final season of My Little Ponies. But, yeah, Superhero Girls is pretty good. Um, Not going to lie, it's got Wonder Woman, Supergirl, Batgirl. They could do without Batgirl and, and the little bee, but... Other than that, it's not terrible. Um, Green Lantern, both a boy and a girl version. It's pretty good. Some magician, Z Zatara. I don't know. It's 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 cute, and she enjoys it. So that's what we're on right now. But fun stuff, right? <laughs> and of course, when you're locked up in your house, you're watching a lot of things. And uh, like I said earlier at the outset, you know, you know, COVID is not fun. I've had it for a week, and we don't know when it's going away. So don't worry, nobody's in any danger. Um, cold congestion, that's another one. That started yesterday. Actually, Sunday was a pretty good day, and then all of a sudden started getting uh, sick again yesterday. So anyway. All right, we'll take a break. We'll come back, and uh, enough about the COVID, but we'll talk to Jordan Hansen. He will join us. We'll recap the uh, – he was at two of the three state championship games over the weekend. We'll talk to him about the Class C eight-man and uh, the double A, and then uh, also get his thoughts on Big Sky basketball. It's coming up next, Jason Walker Show, presented by Capital Collision Center. And Capital Collision Center has spent a lot of money – and a lot of time becoming manufacturer certified. Special training, special equipment to be on these programs. And it's important to Capital Collision that your vehicle is properly repaired to manufacturer repair requirements to maintain the safety and value of your vehicle. Because manufacturers have, well, it's essentially, it's a playbook. It's a repair manual. And they've spent millions to put these together. And they want their vehicles maintained to those specifications. Well, it's a huge playbook. And Capital Collision, depending on the vehicle, will follow it step by step by step. Depending on which vehicle, which manual they use. But they will follow it step by step by step to make sure that your vehicle is as good, if not better, than before the accident. Montana State Law says it's your choice, your vehicle, and uh, your choice where you have it repaired. So choose Capital Collision Center. Coming right back with Jordan Hansen next, Jason Walker Show. Who doesn't love being number one? When your team's dominating the standings or your favorite band rocks the charts at number one, it feels good, right? Kind of like how it feels when you have auto insurance with State Farm. Because making you feel like number one is an honor your local State Farm agent takes seriously. Through the good times and not so good, your State Farm agent's proud to be here to help life go right. Call State Farm agent Mike Miller in Helena today. Have you thought about buying a home and just don't know where to begin? Well, when it comes to one of the most important purchases one can make, we understand it can be frustrating and confusing, but it doesn't have to be. Let the Major Mortgage Team help you with all your mortgage needs. Major Mortgage means major service, and we would love the opportunity to help you today. Give J.R. McFadden, NMLS number 1246357, a call today at 406-465-1918. Or you can visit him at 2001 11th Avenue, Building A, Suite 3 in Helena. Major Mortgage is a division of AMCAP Mortgage, NMLS number 129122, equal housing lender. Fall is officially here, and now is the perfect time to get your rig tuned up before the big hunt. That means a lift kit from Auto Concepts. An Auto Concepts lift kit will help take you places only the animals can go. And when you do get that big one, make sure you have help to get it home with a winch to pull it out. Or maybe you'll be a good friend and help pull someone out of the snowbank. Check out AutoConceptsHelena.com for more ideas. Auto Concepts, the auto enhancement professionals. 
Yes, it's true that Montana is a long way from the Gulf Coast, but you can bring that Cajun flavor home with a stop at Cafe Zydeco. From po' boys to classic sandwiches, Cafe Zydeco has all the best Cajun in town. Are you in the mood for seafood gumbo or crawfish etouffee? Maybe you're craving jambalaya with some shrimp and grits. Head in for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or call ahead for pickup or delivery. Cafe Zydeco will fix all your southern cravings, even on a chilly Montana day. Cafe Zydeco is a proud sponsor of the Jason Walker Show. New vehicles keep coming, and Capital Collision Center keeps earning certifications to repair them. They're Helena's newest GM certified facility. No matter the make or year, they repair your car to manufacturer's standards and requirements, maintaining its safety and value. Montana State Law says it's your vehicle and it's your choice where you have it repaired. Choose Capital Collision Center, certified in GM, Subaru, and Nissan, and Helena's only shop certified in Honda, Acura, and Ford. When you value safety, go to Capital Collision Center on Euclid. Storewide savings are what you'll find when you shop for new home furnishings at Rutgers Furniture. This means tremendous values on Helena's largest in-stock selection of home furnishings. When you shop Rutgers, you'll find storewide savings on the furniture you want for every room in your home. And you'll also find our selection of Serta iComfort, the most comfortable beds in Helena. 12-month financing is available with approved credit on most purchases over $299. Ask for details. You'll find storewide savings at Rutgers Furniture, 1010 Dearborn, Helena. Welcome back. Jason Walker Show presented by Capital Collision Center here inside the Major Mortgage Man Cave. And this segment brought to you by Rutgers Furniture. Still to come, voice actor Rob Paulson. He is the voice of Pinky on Pinky and the Brain. He also uh, does a character on Jimmy Neutron. He's the voice of Raphael and Donatello from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and uh, much more. So we'll uh, look forward to that coming up. Uh, if you're wondering why I'm wearing glasses, it's because I have uh, the COVID and my eyes itch, so I can't put my contacts in. But as we welcome in our friend on the Mike Miller State Farm Hotline, Jordan Hansen, um, we've talked a lot about COVID since March, you and I, and I'm telling you, man, it is legit. I came down with it last week and uh, diagnosed with it yesterday officially, but holy cow, it is f- not fun. Yeah, man, I'm obviously thinking about you for sure, and uh, I'm not kind of yeah man it just at at some point it just feels like at this point with how we're kind of going about it it doesn't necessarily feel like anybody's really going to be left on the wayside or left on the side for for this hopefully hopefully you you bounce back soon and um yeah i'm just i'm sorry to sorry that you're having to deal with that man for sure well and it's crazy because i think i got it when i went to do the volleyball state b volleyball up at Shelby. And when I talked to the health department today for the contact tracing, they didn't even care about that. It was two days. uh, So my symptoms started, they wanted to know where I'd been from two days before where my symptoms started, which was home. So I don't know where I got it, probably in Shelby, but I wore my mask. Masks work, I thought. Yeah. Um, (laughs) But I didn't have my glasses on. I didn't have my face, my eyes covered. So anyway. Yeah. Um, it's legit. So, man, I hope you don't get it. Or if you do, you get a mild version because it's, uh, it's not fun. But anyway, you yeah. were in Billings. Um, you got to see two of the three state championship games. And that's almost almost like a dream come true for a sports reporter. A lot of driving, a lot of hours in the car from Missoula to Billings and then back to Drummond. But let's start in Billings Friday night, that double-A Sentinel and West. And, and a closer game, I think, than a lot of people expected. But nobody knew how good West was. And we found out as a uh, Sentinel beats them by nine. Yeah, no. Uh, well, first of all, two things we actually didn't, we did not end up stopping in Drummond. One of our other photographers oh, decided okay. to take a so, 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 so we just went back through, but, um, but yeah, um, uh, watching, watching, you know, Sentinel finally get a test for the first time this year. And um, just against, a, against a really good West team and just some, some very curious play calling throughout the game, I thought, but, Really, you know, it was it was two two pretty evenly matched teams, um, and and Sentinel Sentinel really did what it had to do to to, to win, especially um, on on the defensive side and especially in the money downs and, and where it and where it really counted. I mean, uh, the the biggest thing was that West, you know, got inside the twenty yard line and 
um, four times. And, you know, three of those ended up being, you know, chip shot field goals, which, I mean, credit to, um, you know, West and, and, and being able to convert those for, for points. But, you know, if, you, if you're trading field goals for touchdowns, you know, it, it doesn't it doesn't always work. And, and the other thing, too, is that um, – and something that I really think kind of influenced um, how the rest of the game was, was kind of played is that West, you know, missed, a, missed an extra point on, you know, their, their 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 opening or their first touchdown drive or their only touchdown drive their first and only touchdown drive um and and, and that really made you know a, a lot of different decisions especially later in the game because you know Sentinel got to you know go up by nine points late and or well with 11:47 left in the you know fourth quarter and and it just you know made you know it's like one of those things it's like okay like you know West is going to have to have two positions two possessions and just get just some really interesting games when. Uh, ship and, and, and game management um, th- throughout the game. It's just it's two great coaching staffs, two great mm-hmm. teams, and um, it was it was a lot of fun. Um, the least surprising signing announcement ever with uh, Camden Sermon announcing he's going to go to the Grizz. Um, he announced that Sunday, so uh, or Saturday, I think it was, but not a surprise there, right? I mean, the kid did. He, he's he was a stud for Sentinel. He transferred in to play football. And we all knew where he was going before he even played his first game for Sentinel. Right. And, you know, with his brother, you know, having already been, you know, in a Grizzly and having a good experience with the program and, you know, really, um, you know, becoming a household name in Missoula for the most part, yep. I would say, especially over the last couple of years. Um, and not even just Missoula, just kind of in Montana and anybody that's watching and consuming Grizz football. But um, I, I wasn't surprised. Um I thought maybe he might have a chance to um, play at maybe a little bit bigger school. Um, you know, he's listed at six one. He's about he's about my height, so he's probably just you know maybe a little bit maybe a little bit shorter than six one, around six foot. Um, I'm I'm wondering if Montana was like, hey, you know, we'll let you we'll let you play quarterback, and maybe you know the other schools that maybe were a little bit bigger were like, you know, we're going to try to convert you to you know a safety or you know, a wide right. receiver or something like that. And I, I'm just, I'm just speculating. No, none of that, that, that's not even anything I heard. The only, the only thing that I heard is that maybe he was talking with uh, University of California, Cal a little bit. Um, but I, you know, I, I, that was just secondhand from, from, from somebody that I do trust. So, um, you know, I, I, I think that he's going to be, you know, a great pickup for him. I mean, I think the, you know, Grizz definitely can use a little bit of, um, you know, spice in the, in the quarterback room with that. And I think that he's going to have the opportunity um, to, 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 to really be a dude for him. And, you know, he's just so quick, has great, he, he has some of the, he has some of the best feet of, of any, you know, quarterback that I've seen um, in person, at least at the high school level um, in, in, in quite some time. So it's just, just very, just very, very impressive, very nice young kid and um, good family. And um, just, you know, it, it, it seems like a good, uh, good thing for me. And really it was kind of a big day for the Grizz. They had a couple, they actually had quite a few commits. Um, on on that Saturday and then on yeah. that Sunday, um, and then early a little bit this week too. So big big day for the Grizz. So far, yeah, we'll uh, we'll talk about Grizz basketball here in a second. Go back to West real quick. Um, their defense, and you got to see them in in person. We knew how good their offense was with Taco Dowler and and his brother and and every and Erbacher and everybody else. But what what was it about West defense that did a nice job on Sentinel? Because nobody else had done that all year. They were they were able to contain Camden. I mean, Cam still got you know his yards on occasion. I, I, or I, I can't remember exactly what he finished with. I mean, it, it, it was a decent, it, it, it was it was a decent finish in total as far as the yardage and stuff goes. Uh, but I mean, that's just what they were able to do. And really, honestly, it was. I mean, no, and and, and obviously Cam had some had some good drives. You're not going to take away, away anything from his you know performance. But Dayton Bay threw three touchdowns, right? And Dayton Bay was on point. I mean, he was finding his wide receivers. He threw some just great passes. He had two, like, what really kind of brought Sentinel back into the game after kind of getting punched in the mouth a little bit early, having to punch twice, is that T.J. Roush made a great play on a, on a well-thrown ball from Dayton um, at about the 30-yard line or so and, and, and took it down to the 25. And then a couple plays later, you know, Dayton finds um, T.J. For, for a touchdown, and it was just a nice little touch pass, a little jump ball in the back of the end zone. He was open. You know, Sentinel goes up 7-6, and all of a sudden, you know, you can just kind of see the palpable, you know, sigh of relief on the on the, on the the sideline. And, you know, similarly, when, when Zach Cruz got a little uh, touchdown from, from Dayton um, in, in the second quarter to put um, the, the the Spartans up 14-9, to 
Um, it, it, I, I just I, I saw some of the coaches turn around and just kind of like because I was on I was on the sideline and I, it, it, it's kind of like it just it, it seemed like okay, it's like okay like we're fine we're scoring touchdowns we've already got you know it, it, it was just it, it was a couple of really big momentum plays from Dayton and some of the other you know kids on that team to to really um kind of kind of switch kind of kind of just take control of the game and I think that's one of the big advantages Sentinels had this year is that they never really panicked at, at, at any point and you know they were just very you know we got this we've got a system that works we just need to trust in you know our system and our coaching and you know, r- 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 rambling a little bit there but I've well, just been so with, with, with that thing. Jordan Anson joining us here Jason Walker show um that's why it's it's not rambling it's just called good in-depth coverage <laughs> See, I appreciate that. <laughs> um, you did not go to Drummond Phillipsburg, but we all uh, uh, saw the pitcher, and I texted you last week mm-hmm. after I talked to Coach Cutler and said I made him tear up a little bit. And then I don't know who the photographer was, but man, he did a great job getting that photo of uh, Coach Cutler hugging his kid, Cade Cutler. And that's the photo that uh, people are going to be talking about forever because, man, um, the love between a, not only a coach and a player, but the father and the son. Definitely, and that was and that was and that was Tom Bauer for us, yeah. uh, 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 our, our, our photo editor, a truly great guy, truly great photographer, um, and and definitely appreciate him going out there and doing that. So Ben and I didn't have to get up at six six a.m. in the morning to to, to, to make that trip from Billings, <laughs> but but yeah, you know, and, and and I think I said this on your show before, but you know, this with Mike, you know, battling cancer, his daughter battling cancer, the you know, the things that they've, you know, gone through and just, you know, trying to bring, you know, Drummond and Phillipsburg together like that. And especially, you know, and Mike has been an administrator in Phillipsburg for years and years and years. Um, One of my favorite coaches to talk to, just a guy that, you know, will always call you back or, you know, you know, things, things along those lines and just great person to talk to, has a great knowledge of the game. Um, I I got a chance to know him a little bit um, at the Bob Cleverly All-Star Game a couple years ago, spent some time with him. Um, you know, and there's a there's a really good story out there about these sports, Bruce Taylor, um, about uh, Mike Mike's battles with cancer and stuff. And I mean, uh, Bruce Taylor's, you know, I think maybe the best writer, best sports writer in Montana. Um, and uh, I, I I think that um, that's a story. If, if anybody's interested in that, is definitely look, look looking up. But just you know, just, just cool for him. Cade's a good kid. You know, he's going to do a lot of good things at Montana State, I think. And and just and just one of those just really good. Very cool, very very real, not forced at all. Just cool stories, um, you know, about a kid and his dad who both love football. Yep. Um, not surprised that they uh, they handed it to Scobie pretty good. Scobie's first title a uh, game since twenty or two thousand two. But um, and then the other one, Manhattan Fairfield, a close one, but Manhattan comes out on top, gets its first ever crown. What were your thoughts on that one? Similarly, you know, I just kind of thought that Manhattan was just kind of the best team all all, all year. I mean, it was just so impressed. Um, you know what they did with, with with Florence, and I would have been interesting to see if you know a, a, a rematch of, of that game earlier this season. But you know, just 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 two just two good teams going at it, and um, you know, even and, and going back to Scobie for for just a quick second. I mean, that was like that was like I think it was twelve six at halftime, or you know six six late in the late in the second quarter. So I mean, mm-hmm. it was one of those things that the game kind of got away. But but yeah, no, I, I was I was really impressed with. With, with, with what Manhattan did this year. Just a great, great defensive team and, um, you know, a, a, a team that, you know, so close and having to deal with Eureka for years and, you know, finally, finally being able to, to, to break through and, you know, having, you know, Cale DeBauer, um, a, a senior lineman and team captain for him, uh, you know, not playing, not playing that game. I mean, he had a, a very serious injury um, uh, during, during, during a football game. It's, it ruptured his intestines and uh, bruised his aorta and bruised his pancreas and his life flight at the Great Falls at night. So, I mean, just like, you know, just, just, just a lot of things going on for, 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 for that Manhattan team. And, and just, you know, it, 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 it's a cool story for them for sure to, mm-hmm. to, to, to win that game. Um, all right. I'm going to run down my, my final top five in each one. You tell me agree or disagree. Sounds good. Okay. Double A. I got Sentinel number one. West, Bozeman Senior Helena. Bozeman senior Helena. Mm, yeah, yeah, I'll buy that. Because um, Bozeman battled West twice and beat senior, so. Yeah, yeah, no, I'll, 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 I'll buy it. I probably put Great Falls in there at six. I mean, shoot, no, <laughs> the only team to 
I guess the only teams to score double digits on, on Sentinel this year were Flathead, Great Falls, and uh, West. So, but, That's true. Um, and Senior yeah, B Bozeman, I, I beg your pardon, but um, that was first game of the yeah. year. I forgot about that. Yeah, well, I mean, it, but it was also the first game of the year. I mean, I think I think a lot of these teams are very different. <laughs> True. You know, now, True. I mean, it, it feels it feels like ten years ago at this point. But, right. You know. <laughs> and it wasn't even ten weeks ago. It feels like. Um, I know it's insane. And then in A, so Laurel sent uh, Billing Central, and then oh, so you know the top two are going to be the winner and the loser. So then, right. Yeah. It's really three to five. So Miles City, Dylan Hamilton. Really, Dylan over Hamilton. Yeah. I like the Why? Beavers. I've always loved the Beavers, man. I mean, I, I love I love the Beavers, too. I love Dylan. I, I, I've said many times that Beaverhead County is one of my absolute favorite places in this in this state. But I still think Hamilton's better than Dylan, especially since Hamilton beat Dylan. <laughs> well, there you go. Um, but Dylan, Dylan lost closely in the playoffs, though, right? Yeah. Closer yeah, no, than Hamilton was, did? Yeah, I think it was... Um, I, I mean, I, I don't I, even I don't know. know. About the game. I think it was like 26 to 20 or something along those lines. Yeah. Okay. Some, yeah. Some, 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 some All right. Three. Uh, we'll do these and then we'll get to the, the basketball that I want to chat with the, the big sky. Okay. Manhattan, Fairfield, Florence, Glasgow, Townsend. Yeah. I actually, I actually really buy that one. And I, I would, I think I would almost agree to that to a T. Um, yeah. I, you know, I, I, I'm glad you threw Townsend there too. Cause that's just, a team that I, I just I really liked this year, just played good defense, and they did, and they were consistent. Good. That was the thing. Yeah, you know they were they were quietly good, and then they just were consistent all year long. Well, and and I think that's kind of the story for all the teams that you know made it to the state championships this year. I think I think this year especially, just consistency was just so key. I mean, you know, not getting too high or too low on a, on a lot of these games. Yeah, and, I mean, no. though, some, though, I mean, to be fair, I mean, there was just some teams also this year that were just better prepared, I think, and just better teams than everybody else, the Sentinels and the Flint Creeks and the, you know, yep. I would, I would, I would even almost throw Manhattan in there too, but. Oh, absolutely. Well, they've hung, they hung 50 spot up twice in the playoffs. They had five shutouts and held Fairfield to six points in the championship. I mean, that's pretty good. Yeah, um, no, okay. Pretty, pretty. Eight man. I got Flint Creek. I can't drum and Phillipsburg. It's always going to be drum and Phillipsburg. Scoby, <laughs> but then Fort Benton, Shelby, Park City. Fort Benton, Shelby, Park City. Yeah, I, I was just, I was just a little bit surprised that Fort Benton just didn't give Drummond Phillipsburg a little bit a little bit better like, a better of a game, especially. Right? But um, but yeah, no, I I think I think I think I pretty much buy that one too, actually. And then in six man, the top Freud Lake, White Sulphur Springs, Big Sandy, Shields Valley, and Power Dutton Brady. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I might, I might almost throw Shield Valley down one. I, I, I don't know. I, I really thought that Shield Valley was going to have a pretty good shot to, to, to win a state title. And I mean, I guess I mean, they you know, made a little bit of a run in the playoffs, but. So. Yeah. Um, all right. Jordan Hansen, our guest here, Jason Walker show, Mike Miller, State Farm Hotline. You got a great article in the paper yesterday online, both the Missouli and 406mtsports.com. Um, we haven't even gotten to the start of the NCAA season, and we're seeing games canceled, including four already in the Big Sky. How in the world are we going to get to basketball season? Well, I, that's a good question, and honestly, I, I'm just at this point. I'm just wondering every time I I check on Twitter. I mean, what's gonna what's what's gonna be what's gonna be next? Uh, Lance Hartler, uh, Lance Hartler, who I believe that you've had on the show mm-hmm. before, and I um, we're, we're we're just messaging on Twitter back and forth today, and we we're like. We should just start. We should just start a um, a Google Doc with all the the cancellations. And I mean, I think I think because including the Eastern Washington. Here, let me bring this up really quick. Um, including the there, there's a the early Big Sky um, that first weekend. Um, but it's also kind of looking into looking with EWU and NAU is supposed to be playing on the third and the fifth. It looks like those games might not happen. Yeah. You know, at, at at least now. So I mean, we're up to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven games possibly. Um, because Montana State's games, Montana State's women's games versus uh, uh, the South Dakota South Dakota School of Mines um, was canceled and won't right. be made up. And then there was also questions on whether or not they're going to be able to play EWU on the third and the fifth. 
and obviously with NAU and uh, or yeah NAU and and Iwu um, both losing uh, three games on the on the men's side already or you know being postponed or whatever. Um, so and you know the thing for Northern Arizona and uh, Eastern Washington too is that those Oregon and UA by games. You know, we're we're, we're going to be money. I mean, yep. you know, Arizona Arizona's paying the Grizz seventy seventy thousand dollars, so I'm sure that it was a similar similar number for NAU. Um, and Oregon, I think, paid the Grizz. I think it was like eighty thousand last year. I, I need to check that, but it was something something along those lines. And you know, I'm sure they're paying a little bit less than this year, but I mean, that's probably still sixty k out of Eastern Washington's pocket. And Eastern Washington's athletic program is already, you know. <laughs> in flames it seems like half the time and you know it it, it, it doesn't it doesn't help so i it, it's just i i don't know a lot if a lot of these big games you know or the, these bye games are going to be able to even be rescheduled i mean mm-hmm. everything's just so tight and everything's so compacted and you know this december was supposed to you know be where you could put it in a lot of different games and stuff like that and it's leaving everybody scrambling and i know that lance is kind of annoyed um, at Northern Arizona, because the, the University of Arizona's press release had more information about NAU than NAU's press release right. had about NAU. So it, it, it's just, it's just, it's just one of these, it's just one of these things. It's just like, you know, we're, we're, seems like, you know, a, a lot of these teams are, you know, running around with their, with their, like, kicking their heads cut off. And, you know, and I, I did throw in a quote from Travis in that story, you know, uh, Travis says, quote, Look, I've called 30 head coaches and asked all of them what they would do with their protocol is in reference to having a, a player test positive the day of the game or, you know, while they're en route. Right. And he said, of those 35 have planned, most are waiting on conference administration and to, t- and to tell us what the deal is. So, I mean, granted, you know, it's what? Today's the 24th? Yeah. Um, you know, that was, you know, six days ago. But, you know, you're, you're saying that seven days before the NCAA day is supposed to start that you don't even have a plan? I mean, like – you know, and, 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 and I mean, I know that's just, you know, kind of one specific thing, but, you know, what else don't they have plans for? You know what I mean? Like, yep. I, I just, you know, and, and it sounds like UM is, is doing, you know, what they can. And I, I was a little bit questioning uh, another quote that Travis had about, you know, hey, we might be in a better place because, you know, a bunch of kids and, you know, uh, staff members in, in our program have already had COVID. So, you know. I, I, you know, I, I just, is, is that what it's going to come down to? Is a team that you know gets COVID first and recovers the fastest is going to be the team that's going to be able to get those thirteen games in and get to the NCAA tournament because you know they already you know like have had it. Like, dude, is that like where we're at right now? Like, I, I just, it just, yeah. It instead of fir- I, instead of first one to sixty wins, first one to have all fifteen have COVID wins. <laughs> Which team will be the first to have all 15 team yeah. members test positive for COVID? Oh. Like, good Lord. So, um, I mean. It's yeah, just I, nuts. And it was a great article. Um, but, yeah, it's just, it's absolutely crazy that, that and then I, I saw, too, that there's some, some schools are requiring, like, these pay games, requiring the smaller N, NAI or D2 schools to test up to, like, three times a week of the game that they're supposed to play. Well, they can't afford that. Who's paying for that? Right. And, 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 and that, and the three times a week is actually the PAC 12, um, uh, stipulation as well, which probably is why they're catching these, these cases now. So it's just like, Oh yeah. You know, how many, how many times you're, you know, how long have these players tested positive? And I mean, like, it, it's just, you know, who else has had, who else already had it and isn't testing positive because they, you know, it, it's out of their system. You know what I mean? Like, yep. I, I just, you know, and, and, and I know at UM, it's just it's kind of funny, like, you have to you have to pay for your test if you just want a test. But if you say that you're symptomatic and you lie and say you have a fever, if you don't have a fever, you, you say you're having all these symptoms, you can go to you can go to UM Health Center and get a free test. So it's just it's it's like it's like it's like what are what are we what are we doing here? Like yeah. I mean, like but I mean to, to be fair to UM as well, I mean they only had four new cases on campus today, and I think they're up to like. 422 since the, since the semester started, which comparatively with other schools, it's pretty dang good. Yeah, it is. Um, and, and, you know, they've done a good job. And, you know, Montana State's been very much on this, you know, since the beginning too. So, I mean, like props to, props to our state schools. I, I think that they're taking it seriously. I, I mean, obviously, but like, you know, they're even even more so than, you know, some of these other schools. So, so hopefully, you know, for, for, for you and MSU, you know, maybe they won't run into some of these issues as quickly or, you know, like Travis said, maybe it's just, you know, they just got it out of, of the way early over the summer. So, you know. Yep. Well, and then um, apparently Montana Tech had some cases because Idaho State canceled. And it's not cases yeah. at Idaho State. So. 
Yeah. Um, I, the only, the only release that Montana tech put out yesterday was like two of their golfers or, uh, cross country runners or something got on some all American list of something or another, which I thought was just good, good, good stuff. But yeah, um, <laughs> late, late, late on Monday night, um, they're not really late on Monday night, about 6 PM or so. Um, Idaho state put out a tweet, um, that the women's basketball game against the Grizz or against the Ordiggers, um, would be, would be canceled. Um, you know, last year, um, I know that um, Montana Tech, the men's team, got four four thousand dollars from um, the Grizz to, to come play them. So I, I and I don't know, and I don't have the I don't have a contract for um, any of the in, any of the women's um, basketball stuff. But I, I'm sure that was still something of a buy game, and I'm sure that there was a little bit of money involved there, um, which is which is never good for a cap strap um, university like Montana Tech. So um, you know, and and, and 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 I hate sometimes getting into the money side of these things, but I, I think the financial um, impact is important to understand as well because it's, it's one of the big drivers of a lot of these decisions um, at the at, at the college level, is, and, and, it, and it needs to be you know even as I don't want to exactly say crap, but it, you know it's just it's just I, I think I think it's important that you understand the context of some of this stuff as well. So sure. I, I I don't know we're just we're just we're just in a mess, and I'm just really struggling to see how we're gonna you know be able to to, to get through an entire basketball season. Rick Patino who say what you want about him in his personal life, but uh, back at Iona, and he said, literally, I think it was yesterday, and I tweeted out, this is not a bad idea, but he said, let's cancel it until March and then have May Madness because hopefully there's a vaccine by then. We're supposed to be getting the vaccine to the health workers starting, like, soon, and at least we'll see by January, February, March where we're at, and then we can have a full two-month conference season and have May Madness for basketball. And yeah, it's not and, a and bad idea. No, I, I really I really don't think it's a bad idea either. And I mean I I, I think that, you know, a, a lot of these schools are, are, are putting you know spectator stuff in, you know, they're not gonna have spectators or whatever. But I, I just I think even just, you know, kinda having these sports and having basketball even you know, such a normal winter thing, um, it, it's gonna, you know, empower a, a lot of these you know, high school teams and, and, you know, other things too, to be like, yeah, you know, if the NCAA is doing it, you know, we can, you know, figure out how to have basketball as well. And I just, I think more than anything, it kind of sets a bad example for, um, you know, the, 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 the rest of, you know, winter sports in this country. And I'm just, I'm very worried what's going to happen, um, you know, with, with, with high school prep basketball, because I know there's states that, and even Montana, they're going to really push forward with trying to have, you know, basketball. And I, we, we know that, Small enclosed spaces, like a lot of these gyms across the state, are some of the worst, you know, places to, to do this. And you know, we're 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 gonna you know, we're already seeing a spike, and we're gonna have a spike after Thanksgiving. We know this. We know this is gonna happen. And you know, it it, it just you know, at, at what point do you have to say like, guys, like we we just we 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 can't we can't continue to do this like this. But I don't know. I mean, we we we'll see. You know, there's a lot of money, you know, in the in the March Madness, and there's a lot of money in the TV deals. Um, and you know, they're, they're going to want to try to get paid. So yep, no I, doubt about it. It, 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 it's tough. Um, appreciate the time, my man, uh, stay safe. And, uh, I seriously hope you don't come down with this cause it is not fun. Um, yeah. but have a great Thanksgiving and, um, uh, we'll talk soon next week, probably maybe. No, Sounds good, Jason. I'm off you next week. Than... I'm off next week. Sure. So we're not going to talk next week. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna you, take you, you. You get some. You try to get some sleep and and, and and start and start feeling better for sure. Man. I definitely will, my man. I appreciate it, and uh, we'll talk soon. Sounds good, dude. Talk Thanks. To you later. That is Jordy Hansen joining us. You can follow him at Jordan Hansen on the Twitter. Um, fantastic, fantastic sports writer. Um, nominated him for uh, Montana Sportscaster or Sports Writer of the Year because he does such a great job with the Missoulian and 406mtsports.com. But if you get a chance to go read his article. Uh, articles. I highly, highly recommend it. All right, quick break. We're going to come back. And when we do return into the major mortgage man cave, we're going to talk to voice actor, Rob Paulson. You know him. Well, you don't know him, but you know his voice from Pinky on Pinky in the Brain, uh, Raphael and Donatello from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and more. Rob Paulson next, Jason Walker Show.
New vehicles keep coming, and Capital Collision Center keeps earning certifications to repair them. They're Helena's newest GM certified facility. No matter the make or year, they repair your car to manufacturer's standards and requirements, maintaining its safety and value. Montana State Law says it's your vehicle and it's your choice where you have it repaired. Choose Capital Collision Center, certified in GM, Subaru, and Nissan, and Helena's only shop certified in Honda, Acura, and Ford. When you value safety, go to Capital Collision Center on Euclid. Jason Walker here, and I want to tell you about a great place that's going to make you feel better in just an hour. Ocean Spirit Massage. From deep tissue to hot stone and more, Ocean Spirit Massage will get your sore, tired muscles feeling like new. Whether you overdid it working out, hiking the hills, playing golf, whatever it is, or even if you're pregnant, you will walk away feeling better than you have in years. Book now for yourself or make it a couple's massage. And gift certificates are always available as well. Visit OceanSpiritMassage.com or call 417-0542. Have you thought about buying a home and just don't know where to begin? Well, when it comes to one of the most important purchases one can make, we understand it can be frustrating and confusing, but it doesn't have to be. Let the Major Mortgage Team help you with all your mortgage needs. Major Mortgage means major service, and we would love the opportunity to help you today. Give J.R. McFadden, NMLS number 1246357, a call today at 406-465-1918, or you can visit him at 2001 11th Avenue, Building A, Suite 3 in Helena. Major Mortgage is a division of AMCAP Mortgage, NMLS number 129122, equal housing lender. Have you thought about buying a home and just don't know where to begin? Well, when it comes to one of the most important purchases one can make, we understand it can be frustrating and confusing, but it doesn't have to be. Let the Major Mortgage Team help you with all your mortgage needs. Major Mortgage means major service, and we would love the opportunity to help you today. Give J.R. McFadden, NMLS number 1246357, a call today at 406-465-1918, or you can visit him at 2001 11th Avenue, Building A, Suite 3 in Helena. Major Mortgage is a division of AMCAP Mortgage, NMLS number 129122, equal housing lender. Fall is officially here, and now is the perfect time to get your rig tuned up before the big hunt. That means a lift kit from Auto Concepts. An Auto Concepts lift kit will help take you places only the animals can go. And when you do get that big one, make sure you have help to get it home with a winch to pull it out. Or maybe you'll be a good friend and help pull someone out of the snowbank. Check out AutoConceptsHelena.com for more ideas. Auto Concepts, the auto enhancement professional. Welcome back, Jason Walker Show. Segment brought to you by Mark LaRoe Photography. And Mark not only has does a great job with, you know, senior portraits and family portraits and all that, but he does a great job too with landscapes and just in general, good stuff. And amazing photos of animals, amazing photos of people, and that includes his calendars. And you can get calendars at MarkLaroePhotography.com. Get them ordered. They're great Christmas presents, especially uh, for friends, loved ones that uh, live outside of Montana but love the beauty and miss the beauty of Montana. Go to MarkLaroePhotography.com. On this day in history coming up, the walk-off and uh, much more. But we uh, celebrate uh, a Tuesday and the return of Animaniacs coming back. Uh, remember from what, three decades ago, 30 years ago, crazy. Um, Steven Spielberg behind it. And uh, joining us now on the Mike Miller State Farm Hotline, one of the voices is from that uh, show. Also, you know him as uh, Raphael and Donatello from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, Carl from um, um, what's the show I'm thinking of? Uh, that one. <laughs> which is a really good one. Um, Carl Weezer from Jimmy Neutron. That's it. Um, Pinky from Pinky in the Brain. He's done a lot of other voices. His name is Rob Paulson. He joins us now here on the Jason Walker Show. How you doing, Rob? I'm great, man. I'm living a dream. I'm uh, rock and roll. It's a pleasure to talk to you. You as well. Um, I got. What age did you realize you could do 
awesome things with your voice? Oh, gosh. Um, well, awesome, I suppose, is a relative term. I just did it because it made my soul happy, which I guess was awesome. Um, I, well, as a kid, uh, the only other thing I wanted to be was a professional hockey player. I grew up in Michigan, and I dreamed of, you know, playing for the Red Wings. I wanted to be, um, uh, I wanted to be, you know, Gordy Howe. Sure. Of course, as we know, there was only one. Um, however, I learned very quickly at about 18 when I had a chance to play in college uh, that I had neither the talent, temperament, nor dental insurance to make a nickel as a hockey player. So the other desperate passion for, for yours truly was performing. In those days, it was just singing, singing character, not with a design on making a living at it. Um, I just loved to act, to sing, like a lot of kids. Um, and so I matriculated to LA and 42 years ago, ostensibly to apply my trade as in its logical, usual way, um, singing, acting, all of that. And I had been on the road for years before I moved to LA doing live performance. Uh, and I was in the late seventies, early mid eighties doing TV movies, a lot of commercials, radio, um, um, a lot of demos for friends who were songwriters, jingle singing. Then the opportunity came in the mid-80s to audition for animation. Of course, I jumped at it because I wanted to work. Right. But little did I know that I was fixing to live that axiom that luck is when opportunity meets preparation. Um, I still, to this day, create characters and try to sing and write you know, novelty songs and tweak them just because it's fun. Um, but I was ready. Uh, my pitch came across the plate, and um, the ball was moving pretty slow. I could see the, I could see the, the stitches, and I, I killed it. And not be, I didn't kill it in terms of becoming a movie star, but I just thought, oh, my God, this is the show. This is the gig. Nobody cares what I look like. I'm not limited by being an average-looking kid from Michigan. I can be whatever the people are nice enough to hire me, be in my and my um, creativity allows me to be. So uh, it's a lovely way to move through the world. And now, it, you know, I'm almost 140, and people still don't care what I look like. It's pretty great. Uh, you're promoting, um, well, it's the return of Animaniacs. Uh, it yeah. came back out on Hulu. But, I mean, this is, what, three decades ago that this, t well, 22 years ago it last yeah. aired. But um, why bring it back? Well, the uh, two words. Steven Spielberg, you know, that gets your attention in a heartbeat oh, because you're an actor. You know, um, are, and as they say, um, if Mr. Spielberg calls, you listen. Um, and in this case, uh, Mr. Spielberg, who produced the first batch and uh, with uh, Tom Ruger and Gene McCurdy, who at that time was the head of Warner Brothers Animation, this time, uh, 25 years later, I guess it was from the time we um, actually did the first, uh, started recording, uh, called the president of Warner Brothers Animation, in this case, Sam Register, and uh, Amblin and Warner Brothers decided to pitch it. Uh, Mr. Spielberg himself went to every pitch, uh, four of which were Hulu, Apple, Netflix, and Amazon. And um, uh, I'll tell you what, as a blue-collar worker in the Dream Factory, when you have the king of Hollywood say, hey, Hulu, Amazon, Netflix, um, Apple, when we do this, Whichever one of you folks decides to do it with us, Rob Paulson, Tress McNeil, Jess Harnell, and Maurice LaMarche are in. So don't even worry about thinking that uh, Liam Neeson is going to be the brain. It's not going to work that way. <laughs> That's a big deal to us because um, for obvious reasons. But moreover, it shows Mr. that Mr. Spielberg obviously is in, all in, hands-on, and he knows that the authentic authenticity of the characters is what the audience wants. In this case, it's not about having a movie star do the, you know, the talking chicken. Um, it's about a show that has lasted and been relevant for now two generations. Um, and we're back uh, again. It dropped last Friday on Hulu. And so far, I believe that the general consensus is that um, uh, Mr. Spielberg once again uh, hit the mark. Rob Paulson, our guest here, he's a voice actor on the Jason Walker Show. Uh, known for Pinky, for Pinky and the Brain, Raphael and Donatello from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, um, Jimmy Neutron, uh, Carl Weezer. What else are you known for? Well, the Apple from Animaniac. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Um, I did a character called Snowjob in the original uh, G.I. Joe. 
I was a, a couple of Autobots or whatever the hell. No, wait, um, aerial bots on Transformers. Um, I was Arthur on The Tick. Um, gosh, Fairly Odd Parents. Um, yeah, as you mentioned, how oh, is there a Jimmy Neutron? Sure beat the hell out of lifting stuff, man. It's a lovely way to go through uh, life. And I can still play hockey. There you go. Um, not very well, but I don't like to go out and bang around with my buddies in Burbank when we're when COVID con hasn't taken over, you know? What's the uh the hardest voice that you have had to work on? You know, there's a really fun character I did um for my friend Butch Hartman, a fellow Detroiter who created a show called uh, Fairly Odd Parents at Nickelodeon a few years back. Mm-hmm. And it's the uh, uh alien with a balls out sort of uh, surfer guy vibe uh, named Mark Chen. And um, Mark is balls out all the time, bro. And it's, I'm good for about 45 minutes. And then I got to go home. Um, so that is, is quite onerous on my vocal cords. And when you say hard, to me, that means simply that. It's, right. it's, it's right. difficult because it's hard on my voice. Um the, people often ask me, and I understand because it was a question I had when I was a young actor, isn't that hard, Mr. Paulson? No. I chose to be here. You know, Jason, this is uh, yeah. uh, hard yeah. is being a police officer. Hard is being a school teacher. Hard is working on a farm. Hard is, you know, pouring hot tar on a freeway in Tucumcari, New Mexico in August. That's a hard job. No one forces anyone to be an actor so for me hard is it might wear me out but I, I go home exhausted from being happy you know so i uh, i'm very very keenly aware of how fortunate i am to be in this position i have a two-year-old and she is into um watching stuff now and it's funny yeah and it's it's weird to to talk with you because you know she's into like superhero girls and all these animated yeah. you know, things and 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 then you realize that some of the voices here are some of the voices in My Little Ponies, and and it's just you guys are an odd breed that that there's. It's amazing what you do. I really envy you guys. Thank you. Um, and we are a bit of an odd breed, but you know what's odd about most of us, and I know this because I know all the people who have voiced every cartoon show that you've ever watched in your life, except for the ones who have passed. But well, and some of those too. I got to work with Mel Blanc. Wow. Um, Utterly devoid of pretense, Jason. These people are the most gifted, utterly gratitude-filled humans I've ever had the great good fortune to meet. Um, And uh, one of the shows that I worked on for years that your little girl may be watching that was an excellent show, uh, specifically for little kids, was called Doc McStuffins. Mm. And it was a Disney show. I think it's on... Probably, well, it's on one of the Disney, you know, uh, offerings. Very clever about a, a little girl who, you know, wants to be adopted, but she doctors all of her pets with her little doctor stuff. And, of course, all the, the different pets. And the, and I, I, I play a, a knight named Sir Kirby who sounds like Ronald Coleman. <laughs> um, but all these little critters come to life. Michelle Obama's been on it. David Copperfield's been on it. Um, uh, lots of, uh, um, um, oh God, uh, uh, Gina Davis, because they all get the power of joy, the power of fantasy. But what people forget sometimes, and, and I love it because I know what they mean. They'll say, hey, Mr. Paul, it's such a pleasure to meet you. I've got my Ninja Turtle shirt on. I don't know who I am. I'm 38 years old. And I let them say their piece. And I say, well, I'm 64. Steven Spielberg is 74. Um, uh, You know, uh, Mark Hamill is 70. We don't stop doing this. Mel Blanc died when he was 80. Wow. Saying, man, what's up, Doc? June Ferre, the voice of Rocky the Flying Squirrel. I worked with her on a pilot at Nickelodeon when she was 92, and she killed it. So it's about the joy of creativity and the joy of laughter and sharing that with your sweet baby. I'm telling you, you're going to get to a place when you're going to be able to share something that you both are keenly aware of and you both love. And you'll think about this conversation and 
it'll it'll resonate with you. I got to do the same thing with my parents with Looney Tunes and and Rocky and Bullwinkle and and um, Flintstones. And so for me now, when I get to meet people who come to me in tears because they were in the foster system from six months to mm-hmm. eighteen, and they're now forty, and they meet Raphael, who tangentially got them through six different homes in the foster system because as long as there was a TV, they could watch Ninja Turtles. Right. Now they're married and they've got their children and they're all wearing their bad gum Ninja Turtle t-shirts and they've flown or driven somewhere just to tell Raphael, quote unquote, what turtles meant to them. How on earth do I quantify that compliment? But it shows you the power of the joy that these characters create, irrespective of who the actor is. It's not about me. I don't draw them. I don't write them. But it is a powerful thing, my friend. Well, I appreciate it. Uh, it it's always a pleasure to talk uh, voice acting. Rob Paulson, and uh, get his memoir, too, called Voice Lessons. But look out on Thanks. Hulu for Animaniacs. Appreciate the time, my man. My pleasure, buddy. See you in the water tower. <laughs> that uh, was Rob Paulson. That's awesome. Uh, appreciate him joining us today. And, uh, yeah, Animaniacs, good stuff on Hulu. Um, it's crazy when you think about the voices. Can you do, I can't do voice. I just can't. I wish I could. I wish I could, but I can't. Um, all right, let's get to uh, On This Day in History. It is uh, November the 24th. It is Sardines Day. Uh, in 1838, National Semi-Pro Basketball Congress authorized the Yellow Basketball. 1949, Syracuse Nationals beat the Anderson Packers in five overtimes, 125 to 123. Uh, 1960, Wilt Chamberlain, 55 rebounds in a game, an NBA record. Happy birthday today to Oscar Robertson, born on this date in 1938, the Big O. Freddie Mercury passed away on this date in 1991. Hector Macho Camacho passed away from gunshot wounds on this date in 2012. Um couple of other uh, dates or noticeable uh, birthdays and deaths. Kirby Grant was born in 1911 on this date. Kirby Grant was an American actor who died in 1985, but was in Rustler's Roundup, Yukon Gold, and Sky King. And Kirby Grant was born in Butte, Montana, 1911. Uh, Mr. Miyagi died on this date in 1973, or in uh, 2005, rather, at the age of 73, Pat Morita. Florence Henderson, Carol Brady, died at 82 on this date in 2016. And uh, Lee Harvey Oswald was killed on this date in 1963, a couple of days after allegedly shooting and killing JFK. I say allegedly because don't give me that about a magic bullet that went 18 different directions. There's no way. We're almost at the end of the show. What did we learn? And what did he miss? Time for the walk-off. The walk-off brought to you by Cafe Zydeco, 625 Euclid, and ha- uh, Helen also in Bozeman and Billings. Unbelievable shrimp etouffee. Uh, breakfast wraps, breakfast sandwiches, and uh, hush puppies, fried pickles, you name it. Best Cajun food this side of Mississippi. Uh, Hal Ketchum passed away yesterday from dementia. Hal Ketchum was a very popular country music star in the early to mid-90s. Um, small town Saturday night. Um, past the point of rescue, just a, a sure love and unbel- I mean, just a laundry list of hits from the early to mid '90s, and uh, Hal Ketchum will be uh, will be missed as well. It's been a 2020 can go away, man. Uh, what else have we learned? COVID is is real. I have it. Recovering, isolating in my house, and uh, hoping you don't get it. And that's the thing. I was wearing my mask everywhere I went, but I still ended up getting it. But we'll be back tomorrow. Samantha Bennington will join us. Thanks to Jordan Hansen today, Rob Paulson as well. If you missed anything, go to jasonwalkershow.com. And again, tomorrow, Samantha Bennington joins us. Talk about uh, being the ex-wife of a rock star. It's coming up tomorrow on Jason Walker Show. Have yourself a terrific Tuesday. We'll see you back here tomorrow at 4. Once again, make sure you go to jasonwalkershow.com 
Have yourself a great night. The Jason Walker Show is produced by the Jason Walker Media Company. Any reuse, rebroadcast, or retransmission without the express written consent of the Jason Walker Show is strictly prohibited. Just listen, watch, and enjoy.